this and all for us for a few minutes, please? <laughs> we want to start our presentation just a little bit earlier because we have Senator Tao with us today, and he's like on the fifth of his eighth parade today. So we have to get him on the road. There are other people waiting for him. So um, there'll be other speakers. This is just the beginning of the beginning of our afternoon. So I'd like to introduce our state senator, Bruce Tapp. because we need to have a large crowd today to be able to show our appreciation to Jim for bringing us the wonderful gift that he has of understanding the stories of these individuals that lived through so much peril and so much challenge in their lives so that we could continue to have the freedom and the democracy that we celebrate all across Massachusetts, all across the country, and indeed all across the world today. One of the things about Memorial Day, which I think as many folks are aware of today, is that it started back in the, the South during the Civil War. And it started when a group of mothers placed flowers on various graves from both sides of the conflict to be able to say that we appreciate your service and your sacrifice. And ever since then, this day has been reserved so that we can think about what it means to be Americans and what it means to be the beneficiaries of the great service of so many men and women who have left the ordinary things in their lives to become extraordinary people who carried the banner of freedom and who fought and sacrificed and lived through pain and anguish in many cases and all of their families that endured the same thing so that we could live on the greatest nation on the face of the earth. And what a remarkable thing it is to come forward and see Jim, who takes a moment to preserve a set of these stories that are so important, not only on a day like Memorial Day, but every day, so that we can understand and never forget what it means to carry that responsibility to be an American, and what it means to think about folks that have suffered and endured and triumphed so much that it is our responsibility to always remember that, to always carry that, and to always do two things. One, never to forget the simple power that was shown to us by those mothers that placed those flowers on those graves of saying thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you mean to us. Thank you for what you mean to the world. And two, to take every opportunity that we can in our own lives to do what we can to honor the service of those veterans, whether that be giving someone a helping hand whether that be teaching something about our democracy, or whether it be about walking down the street and saying, thank God we live in this free country. So we are all, I think, blessed to have this wonderful book that we commemorate today, and we are very, very blessed to have Jim. So I have a citation from myself and my colleagues in the Senate uh, that I'd like to present. And I'm actually going to walk over and give it to you uh, in just a minute, but I want to read it first. And so, just Jim, so you know, there's a photo op coming. I see the camera in motion. It's to my left. So we're going to look this way when I come over, okay? So this is from the uh, State Senate, and it reads, Be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to James F. Arsenal in recognition of your tireless effort and commitment over the past 50 years to share the story of the brothers of Gerson Commando 1637 resulting in the publishing of your book, Brothers of War, The POW Experience. And be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends best wishes for continued success, that this citation be duly signed by the President of the Senate and attested to in a copy thereof transmitted by the Clerk of the Senate. And this is signed by our Senate President, Therese Murray. It's attested to by our Clerk, William F. Welch, and it's proudly offered by myself on May 30th of 2011. And as we recommit ourselves on this Memorial Day to always expressing our appreciation and our dedication to those who have served and those who have sacrificed, Jim, thank you for giving us this incredible document that reminds us just how important doing those things are. 
Thank you very much and congratulations.
God bless. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, there are a few people in the room I do want to acknowledge right now, and I'm going to speak slowly because we're waiting for Representative Jones to show up. But he also had a very long morning, so we'll go on with the festivities. And when he does arrive, we'll have him speak. Uh, we have um, town moderator, John Murphy. Oh, yeah, Mary. Oh, thank you, John. We especially want to thank John. That's the top of the Reading Bank. He has helped with our financing and set all the accounts that needed to be done, so thank you very much. Uh, and we see Jeff Yule, who's still here from this morning's run, so thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, uh, while we're waiting for Representative Jones, uh, we have a little surprise for Jim. We have a surprise presentation to make to you today, Jimmy. It is a special gift from your nephew, Ronnie Arsenault, who is presently stationed at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Although he would like to be here today in person, his duties are keeping him busy on the West Coast. While he may not be here in person, he is very much in present here today. And he has asked James McLaughlin, who is the commander of the North Reading VFW Post 10874, to stand in on his behalf. He has something to say. Jim? I'm the mayor of the North Reading BFW, but on the truck today, uh, Mr. Jones was referring to me as a civil war vet. James Arsenault, author of 39 Brothers in your book, Brothers of War. James, you truly are a, a member of the greater generation. I would like to thank you for your time in the military and your service and sacrifice on behalf of the Commonwealth and our great nation. And say today, we are proud of you for what you have done to commemorate the history and memory of the 39 brothers. Well, I have a presentation from your nephew, Mr. This flag, a special gift from Don Arsenal, your nephew, it was flown on a B-52 Strato Fortress bomber, on a B-2 Stealth bomber, and with a B-1 Lancer bomber crew, in honor of the 39 brothers and you, as James Arsenal. The following words are set forth in the The following words are set forth and appear on the back of the case, which reads as follow. Uncle Jim, so proud of your life, life's accomplishments, and your dedication to country, family, and friends. Much love and respect, Ronald J. Arsenal, Jr., U.S. Air Force, retired. Flag, Jim. Please know that it is given with Ron's deep personal gratitude for what you have done to preserve the memory of the 39 brothers and for all you've done for your family and extended family here at home. I also would like to invite everyone here to view the inscriptions and the names are also on the all 39 names. Thank you. Representative Jones just entered the building. Evidently, he didn't get the memo about casual. <laughs> but Brad is here today to speak from the House of Representatives. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, Jim, I appreciate you serving in the uh, Civil War, but if those are the comments from my dad, that's because he was in the Revolutionary War. So. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Just a recognition from the house, and, and Jim, I want to thank you. I have a copy of the book, and I started to read it. And I would say probably something like today is long overdue. Uh, and we appreciate your service and your sacrifice. And we appreciate, I think most of all, taking time with your brothers to put your remembrances into a book so that my kids, and hopefully my grandchildren someday can remember, and I'm sorry to get emotional, what you went through for us. Hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offer serious congratulations to James Arsenal in recognition of your steadfast commitment to your fellow brothers of war. You are honored for your outstanding service and dedication to the United States of America. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses its hope for future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this 30th day of May 2011, signed by the Speaker of the House, the one that's not indicted. Thanks, James, for your service and sacrifice on behalf of the House of Representatives and a very grateful nation. Thank you. son-in-law. I have been asked to speak for our family and on Jimmy's behalf and I'm honored to do so. Today is a day to remember what the greatest generation did for us and for our freedom. Today is also a great day for the Brothers of War families. Our dad is amazed by the attention the book is receiving, though he does have one concern. He wants to be sure people remember one thing. This is not his story. It is the story of 39 brothers of war who lived, sacrificed, and survived together. He was just the one who was given the job of getting the story told. Luckily, Nancy Parsons answered his call for help. And now his job has been accomplished. Dad, your 38 brothers must have known you would get the story told. Now you can finally put the box of papers away. <laughs> As young children, we always heard the war stories and thought everybody's dad was a POW. Little did we know back then how important our dad's and his 38 brothers' story truly was. We have had the pleasure of attending a few of the reunions over the years and meeting some of the brothers and their families. These are memories we will always treasure. Sadly, we believe our dad and two other brothers are the only ones alive to see their POW experience be made into a book and become a part of history. Aristamulus is in his nursing home in Florida. The time has weakened his body and his mind is still sharp as it was 66 years ago. John Toth, who lives in South Carolina, is no longer able to travel. His disease has taken his eyesight, but again, his memory is as sharp as a tack. Today, Johnny still talks about the chocolate truffle that he loved at one of the reunions we hosted. <laughs> Let us not forget Bob Abrahamson, Ralph Harmon, Walter Siley, Mara Silva, and Alex Smuda. These men, as well as Aris, John, and our dad's contributions made Brothers of War possible. Today we are thankful that the families of Bob Abrahamson and Mara Silver are here to join us for this special event. Dad, we know you wish Mom could have been here to see your job completed, but she is smiling down on you today, saying, James, I always knew you would get it done. Joanne, Jimmy's daughter, 
that spent endless hours searching for information on the brothers or their loved ones, and we wanted to share some of this with all of you. Of the 39 men, 10 of them took part in the yearly reunions. 12 families have recently been located, and we are still searching for the other 17. We have found that many brothers live troubled lives. Some lives ended early and tragically, and many families never got the chance to know their loved ones. Vincent Dooley, who passed away in 1949, never got the chance to know his young sons. Hazel Clapp was hit and killed by a truck in 1955. His six-month-old son never knew him. We thought we located George Martin, but it was the wrong family but the right town. They did some research, and in the local cemetery records, they found out that he passed away in 1946, shortly after returning home from the war. Most of the families knew their loved one was a POW, but many didn't know much more about their experience. One of the men's wives never knew her husband was a POW. The families of James Carey, Dean Fenton, Roy Head, Glenn Hoke, Alma Rash, Curtis Ryan, Joe Ruggiero, Jack Smith, and Alaos Theodoro, and Harold Thompson made the searching all worthwhile with their excitement and thanks. This book fills in a lot of the blanks and gives answers to many questions they've had. Dad, we know you don't understand why this book is so important to so many people, but we know you lived through the experience. And as you have always said, I did what I had to do to survive. It's not a big deal. But to those that are here today, it is. Now your six grandsons, as well as the other brothers' families, will be able to share this story with their children and generations to come, because the story of 39 Brothers of War is now in everlasting words. We are so proud of our Brothers of War. Thank you for the sacrifices you made for us to live in this great country we call home. And now, a few words on Jimmy's behalf. Jimmy would like to thank those that have come here today to join us in celebration of this special event. His sisters, sister-in-laws, brother-in-law, cousins, nieces, nephews, and friends. And especially his brothers of war family, the Abrahamsons and the Silvers. There are so many people that have contributed to this project and he would like to acknowledge them. He would like to thank the people and organizations who were involved in the funding of this project. Dick Amsterdam of the Cheshire Press, North Reading VFW Post 10874, the Reading Cultural Council, Mary Prenny, Director of the North Reading Elder Affairs, Tom DeSwat, Treasurer of the North Reading Friends of the Council of Aging, and John Murphy, North Reading Town Moderator. He would also like to thank Susan Magno, the North Reading Veteran Services, for her knowledge and the members of the Friends of the Library for their proofreading skills. A special thanks to Edna Armin for the time and effort she put into gathering information that helped start off this project. Also, his daughters for encouraging him to do this book. His daughter Joanne for the time she spent searching for the brothers' families. Mm -hmm. Without her efforts, many of the families would be unaware of their loved one's story being told. And of course, he would like to thank his 38 brothers, for which we are all thankful for their service to our country. Last, but certainly not least, his new friend, Nancy Parsons, who answered his call for help. Without her, this book would never have come to be. To her, his deepest thanks. This story of 39 men began in 1944 when they were marched into a prison work camp, Berzin Commando 1637, where they pledged to write their story. It has only taken 66 years to come to fruition. Sadly, most of the brothers have passed away and are not here to see this. But as the men have said, we'll meet again in heaven. We've already been to hell. Thank you.
Thank you, Paul. That was beyond wonderful. Um, we have a lot of people in this room. We are going to ask maybe if Jimmy can come forward in a bit to sign the books up here. It would make the traffic flow a little bit easier for us. Um, but if he doesn't want to, he can sit there. So it's up to him. It's his day. Um, in closing, I'd like to say a few thank yous also. I want to thank my staff, Jeannie Fitzpatrick, Michelle Cronin, and Mark Neal, who's actually working for NORCAM today and filming this presentation. Um, I want to thank my friends of the Council of Aging for supporting this wonderful event and book, and especially Tom DeSwat. Tom? Where are you? I saw you. Without Tom, the finances would be in a real rumble. He is like, <laughs> he's a blessing. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank Dick Amster. Dam? Dick? You can't miss him in the crowd. Thank you for believing in the book and in us. I wish he were here today, but I want to thank the late Tom O'Hare for always instilling in me that there are stories to be told, and the time is getting short to tell these stories. So, Tom, hope you're happy. Um, <laughs> My heartfelt thanks to Nancy Parsons, who helped author the book with Jimmy, and for inspiring me to add to my resume a documentary filmmaker and a book publisher. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> and last but not least, to Mr. James F. Arsenault and his 38 very brave brothers who gave us the privilege of telling this story. Thank you very much. Easier and the flow of traffic a little bit better. There is no way we ever imagined this crowd. This is absolutely wonderful. You have a lot of people who love you, Jim. Uh, so we have refreshments.